Welcome to This Birding Life, a podcast for bird watchers everywhere. I'm your host, Bill Thompson III. This Birding Life is hosted by Bird Watchers Digest, the magazine for birders who like to read and readers who like to bird. Check out our rich array of engaging print and digital content, videos, podcasts, e-newsletters, books and booklets, and even events at birdwatchersdigest.com. Our generous sponsors help to make every episode of This Birding Life possible. Carl Zeiss Sports Optics, makers of fine binoculars and spotting scopes, have supported this podcast for many years. They are as committed to the birding community and to bird conservation as they are to making world-class optics. Learn more about Zeiss at facebook.com slash zeissbirding. And the American Birding Expo. The American Birding Expo is an annual event that brings together the worldwide birding marketplace and the community of North American birders. It's the most incredible shopping experience available for North American bird watchers. And you should mark your calendar to attend the 2017 American Birding Expo, September 29th through October 1 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Learn more about this one of a kind event at birdingexpo.com. This is episode 65, Champions of the Flyway Part 2. If you've been with us as a listener for the past nine months or so, you'll remember episode 59, which was Champions of the Flyway Part 1. That episode was a preview of the Champions of the Flyway event late last March in Elat, Israel. Champions is a 24-hour bird race across the southern third of Israel, which raises money to protect birds along the Rift Valley Flyway, which connects Eurasia, the Middle East, and Africa. During both spring and fall migration, millions of birds move along the flyway between their breeding grounds in the north and their wintering grounds to the south. The trouble is, their journey may get cut short by illegal shooters, bird trappers selling birds to the international black markets, or for food or for pets. Even worse, some of this shooting is merely for sport, just blasting birds out of the sky for the heck of it. It's called tradition in some of these countries, such as Greece, Malta, Turkey, and Cyprus, And although it is universally illegal, very little enforcement of the wildlife laws occurs. So bird populations have been decimated over the centuries of this practice. Champions of the Flyway brings together teams of birder conservationists who compete and raise funding, which is then donated to a BirdLife International partner in one of the countries along the Flyway. In 2016, I captained a Champions team, the Way Off Coursers, sponsored by Birdwatchers Digest and Carl Zeiss Sports Optics. And the beneficiary that year was the Hellenic Ornithological Society in Greece. The 2016 race was a huge success, raising a record amount of money for bird conservation. More on that in a little while. This episode will take you along with our way off coursers during the Champions of the Flyway in 2016. The coursers that year were Ben Listus, Alvaro Jaramillo from the U.S., and myself, and Mark Cocker from England. We opted not to drive all over southern Israel trying to compete with the teams with vastly greater knowledge and experience birding that part of the world. Instead, we chose to bird just one park in Elat on the southern tip of Israel. The Elat Bird Watching Center is a beautiful jewel of habitat, and we stayed there within the park for the entire 24 hours of the bird race. So it was almost a big sit, but we walked all over the park. According to my Fitbit, we walked more than 10 miles within the one-mile square park and we tallied a great number of birds. Best of all, we conserved our resources, both our own energy and natural resources. We didn't burn a lot of fossil fuels racing all over the place. And we were able to stake out birds there in the park to share with other teams as they came through. Most of the teams came through our park at one point during the race, so we had an absolute blast. Here are some of the sound files I recorded during the 2016 Champions of the Flyway event, starting with our team driving south from Tel Aviv, birding and chatting on our way, to the opening ceremonies in the southern tip of Israel in Elat. All right, we're, we're driving south on the Highway 6. Uh, where are we going, south or southeast? We're going south. And we're going south, and we're, go- we're going for Longville, Pippet, Batalur, and maybe uh, some bustards, some morning bustards. And this Steve is, McQueen's. We've got the... Uh, We've got the uh, team together here for the first time, the way off coursers. We've got Alvaro. Alvaro, say hello. Hello. Alvaro Jaramillo. That's got me. Mark That's Cocker. Me. Hello. And Ben Lizdis. Ben Lizdis reporting for duty. We're all excited because we're in, we're actually in the rain, driving south in Israel, starting on scouting for 
stuff that won't be use, useful for us at all for our big sit, but uh, headed south toward Elot to start the festivities for the week of birding the Champions of the Flyway. So I'll add to this as we go along, and peace out. I think that birding in the U.S. Uh, is at a tipping point right now where things are becoming just more mainstream. Um, whether it's, you know, in gardening, gardening magazines and, you know, yeah. even like uh, movie stars and people suddenly interested in this whole yep. deal. And, and I think it'll change the, the dynamic of the age structure, too. I think it'll, the birders will be younger, maybe in their 30s, 40s, you know, as we, as we kind so. of move forward. Uh, it's happening slowly, but I think it's happening. I, I just totally see this change. That's what were you sa saying the difference you see in Latin America? Oh, in Latin America, especially in the South, Argentina, Chile, maybe um, you know some other nations down there, most people get into birding because of an interest in, in nature and conservation and connection to sort of the outdoors. And it tends to be a lot of young people and, and more, more often than not, young women. So you have people in their 20s. If you go to a birding club, in Santiago, most people are in their 20s, 30s at the oldest, and you know over half of them are women, which is a completely different situation than the UK or in, or the US, I would say. Because in the US, it's predominantly probably would you say 60% women, I would yeah. old, and and 60% women probably in their 60s or above. Right, right. Sort of retire after retirement. And um, what is it in the UK, Mark? Well, it's as I, as I've said before, it's. Before, up until, you know, the millennium, I would have said it was a completely dominated by men, f tiny minority of women. Uh, that picture is changing quite a bit. You see many more women out there, but I think, I think one of the critical things is the culture that exists is unattractive to women if it's dominated by men. And I think that's one of the problems that we're facing is that it's, it's being, the, the parameters have been set by men uh, and it, they're all dressed khaki and they're in sort of paramilitary gear and it's very competitive. And I think it puts women off. And I, I would say that's how you get a situation in South America where you've got largely women. They're not competing with an existing, pre-existing cultural, a birding culture. Right. Yeah. Where are we going? All right. So there's a red start just so popped into here. There's oh. a red start um, on this overhanging... Ah, just shot left. left. Yeah, on the acacia. So, so what, are the, what are the differences in these warblers that we're seeing? So the issue is you've got, so if you're a North American and you're dealing with warblers, a lot of our warblers are so color-coded that it doesn't, you know, you you, right. you can go right to, you know, orange Blackburnian warbler, you know, and it's a little easier than right. here. In the old world, a lot of the warblers are dull in color, not all, um, but you yeah, have a whole, all. you have a whole bunch of species and, and a way to get, simplify things is to, to get down to the, the genus, you know, mm -hmm. so the group and and the genera tend to have these complicated names, you know, like Acrocephalus or, you know, Hippolase or, you know, Philoscopus. So they're short forms. So you talk about Acros or Hippos or Philosks, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Philosks. Philosks. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, Sylvia warblers, which are the brighter ones, okay. um, you know, and that, uh, and there's also the grasshopper warbler group. What's that? Locustella. Locustella. You know, Locostella, Elvis Locostella. Did you know him? Uh, yeah, he, he was in the Heartbreak Hotel, wasn't he? Yeah. In any, any, in any case, that that is what we do with the warblers here to sort of simplify things, and we have little packages that are a little bit more bite-sized. Right. So it would have been much easier if uh, they'd all just been color coded. Well, they've dumped some, them down for us. Yeah, we have color coded yeah. them all. They're all either yeah. greenish brown or, or brownish brown. green. Yeah. <laughs> so now I would say that one of the reasons why European birders tend to be very skilled at, yeah. at difficult identifications is because a lot of their common birds are difficult to right. identify. Well, our, you know, when they talk about the diff, uh, confusing fall warblers in the in the North America, they're not confusing at all. No, not that really. was just a miss. It's like 12 of them. Yeah, and, and they're, they're really not, not a big deal. So we have a lot easier time so, with identification. The, that's good. But this morning we saw Chiff Chaff, we mm -hmm. saw Olivaceous, right. and we saw Benelli's. Yeah. Benelli's. Yeah. And those yeah. are all very similar. Yeah. Well, well, they are, but Benelli's and Chiff Chaff are much more similar because they're both philosks, whereas the Olivaceous is a hippo. It's a yeah. hippo, okay. And, and, and it's got a different... And, and a different uh, 
shape to yeah. them. Yeah, long, longer. Yeah. And the other thing is, when you find a hippo, you know you're looking for features which separate that little cluster of birds, whereas you guys are trying to move between the different genera and find it more tricky. So a hippo right. and a, a philosk look similar to you, and in truth they do. Uh, they are more similar, uh, but uh, you know once you've got them down to the to the family or to the to the genus, then it becomes a little more simple. Yeah. So you never want to be between a hippo and the water. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. Because no, they'll never trample you. They'll trample you. You can yeah. get trampled by warblers. I wouldn't right. believe. One time I stepped in some hippo droppings and I got them on my boots. Yeah. After driving to Elat with lots of birding stops along the way, we checked into the Hotel Agamim and went to the opening ceremonies that evening at the Elat Bird Watching Center, where Champions Director Jonathan Mayrav welcomed us and handed out the race materials to all of the teams. This was also the debut performance of the Champions Anthem, River of Birds in the Sky, which I wrote and recorded along with my bandmates in the Rain Crows, to help raise funds for Champions of the Flyway. Needed the most. And uh, we find that this is what makes this project so important, that just like Georgia in the first year, Cyprus last year, and Greece uh, this year, the international birding community understands the problems. You know, the spotlight that we put on every specific place gives that extra added, you know, a personal connection, if you may, uh, to each and every place, and uh, that is why you see people open their hearts and their wallets uh, basically to help migrants because it is a flyway, it's global. What we do here can only go so far, and it's up to everyone everywhere because uh, really, a species like turtle dove, you all know the countries. Turtle dove used to be a common breeder in Europe. Uh, how many pairs are left in uh, the UK now? Four or something? It's uh, The numbers are, are ridiculously low and I mean common birds, birds that we don't think much of, black caps, you know, are being harvested by the millions, per the, the species, black cap, millions and millions for the finger food industry. And uh, it's very dramatic and it's projects like this, you know, that raise money but also and more importantly so, spread the word. So uh, thanks again for everyone for spreading the word uh, beyond the fundraising. We'll start with the team presentations. Uh, so I'd like to, you know, every year, uh, this is a proper bird race. We need it to be properly branded. So every one of the teams uh, is going to have uh, various magnets and a Champions of the Flyway flag, which you're requested to put on your uh, vehicles uh, from tomorrow and uh, till the end of race day. And as tradition has it, the team with the number one is usually uh, the recipients of the Champions of the Flyway. So I'd like to invite uh, the host team, the Hellenic Ornithological Society team. Car number one. Hello to all of you. Uh, we are really delighted to be here and taking part to this amazing event this amazing race, and we're delighted to take part as a uh, race team. You see here all um, the team I will introduce you. Uh, but also as uh, benefiting as a recipient of this year's conservation funds, well, I, w I would like to thank uh, very much the Society for the Protection of Nature of Israel uh, for organizing and hosting this amazing event on behalf of uh, BirdLife International. But we would like to thank each one of you separately as a team, but really it's one of you. I have a flag also. <laughs> um, you've done an amazing job and you continue doing this amazing job. But for us, you know that it's, um, it's a, a bit more this year because you are doing this for, for the work that HOS as Bird Life Greece is doing and for all the birds who are racing with us. Uh, you know, we are uh, Pterodromi, the winged racers. And for us are racing all the turtle doves that are illegally killed in Greece every year, as well as all the cage birds, all these hundreds of cage birds that are trapped in Greece every year. So it's very, very important for us that you give us the chance to continue doing what we're doing the recent years. We had a very big project uh, to tackle illegal killing in the Ionian Islands. Uh, so actually, you we want you to understand how much you help us keep going on. We have empowered and we have engaged 
many local citizens in the Ionian Islands, as well as all around Greece, and you give us the chance to keep going on. To keep going on and to raise awareness in local level. We've been doing environmental education with thousands of kids, and with your help, we can continue doing this. So I will pass the mic to the rest of the team. And the Costas can give you the image what is happening now and in the Ionian Islands. We are, we're all very familiar with uh, the Greek music we heard tonight, being here, like at home. What we don't feel familiar is by looking at the behavior of birds and mammals in Israel. It's so obvious that there is no shooting here. I mean, you see the behavior of birds in Greece is so different if you see the passerines, if you see the migrants. Imagine that the turtle doves that cross the Sahara, cross the Mediterranean, and then the first land they see are the Ionian Islands, the islands in the south and west of Greece, and then the very moment they start approaching the islands and going to land, they get shot by hundreds, literally hundreds of people, shooting them as a tradition. This has to be stopped, it's totally illegal, it's totally against the European law, this has to stop. Then in autumn we have a different thing. Many, many passerines, they travel, then they see the Greek islands and they go to land, and as, going to the, the, as they see a bush and going to land, instead of a bush they have lime sticks, they get stuck on it. And they have attracted by live decoys by, or by artificial pools called limnes, and they got them. All these are illegal, and this must be stopped. People doing this job are not really criminal minds. They have used to do that. Some of them are really have very deep knowledge of birds. So it's a time, it's a matter of education to bring them on the right side of the fence. A few months ago, I was sitting at a friend's house. It was about one in the morning and we had a few drinks and we talked about champions of the flyway. And my friend says, you know, you guys really need an anthem. It's about time. The project has an anthem. So uh, one in the morning, I Facebook chat Bill at one in the morning. Uh, Bill Thompson, uh, which happens to be a very talented musician on it, their own right, the band, the Rain Crows, uh, incredible music, uh, check them out. So I said, Bill, you know, you you rock. Why don't we, you know, why don't you write a, why don't you write a, our help us, you know, write an anthem. And uh, Bill embraced the idea, and we started powwowing. And I must say that you know he went, sort of swallowed it, you know, and immediately it took off. And with the help of many people here and many others worldwide, uh, we, were, we managed to put together an incredible clip. And uh, it's a great pleasure and privilege uh, to invite uh, Bill Thompson uh, for the first time ever live performance of the Champions of the Flyway anthem, A River of Birds in the Sky. And please feel free to sing along if you would. thousand years and more it's been growing this river of birds in the sky generations of people have watched it in awe this still brings a tear to my eye flying south in the fall back north in the spring the night before the race was to start we had an information sharing meeting where teams could ask the organizers and each other where to find certain species and where Jonathan, the headmaster of the race, went over the race's Very rules. Important for us, uh, the whole moderation process of the lists. It's one of the things that makes this race, you know, well, I'd like to think so, serious. Uh, basically, when you hand in your checklist, you need to hang around for a few minutes to be grilled by the judging panel. All right? It's going to be either me, Yoav Perlman, Itai Shani, and there's going to be a couple of others here. Basically, you're going to hand in the lists, we're going to look them over, and we're going to ask you specific questions for specific species. I have been known to throw out species, all right? So please be accurate. Uh, we expect you not to round corners, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you had, black, you had red wing pratincoles at several places, and then two high-flying pratincoles. That doesn't mean they're a black wing pratincole, okay? You know what I'm saying. So please, um, it's all about ethics. It's very easy to cheat on these races, you know? It just won't make you feel any better about yourself if you win because of cheating. So please, uh, I know all of you personally, you're all, you know, okay 
Let's not do that. <laughs> Please. And we will be harsh on the moderation. I'm already saying this. You know, we need to be quite strict. And it's not like other places where you hand in a list to a group of volunteers sitting there that are just counting the boxes. This is not the situation. We will go box, box. <coughs> we have a common species that no other team has reported. You know, we will make sure that, you know, you know Since we were doing a stationary race, we didn't feel we needed to leave the hotel at midnight when the race started. Most teams left then and drove like crazy up to the northern boundary of the race area to catch the bustards and sand grouse and other species that were staked out and which were much harder to get farther south in Israel. We chose the Elat Birdwatching Center as our birding site because it's a jewel of habitat just off the Red Sea with large salt pans and freshwater lagoons on, up to the south, the city of Elat to the southwest, and the Jordanian border to the east. It has freshwater trees and brushy habitat, and it's basically the first decent bit of habitat that migrants see when they come in either over the mountains, the desert, or the Red Sea. We left the hotel about 3.30 in the morning in order to start burning about 4 a.m. at the bird watching center. We stopped at the Israeli version of a quickie mart and woke up the attendant so he could let us in and get us some coffee and croissants. We'd previously stocked up on some important provisions at the grocery store so we would not have to get back in the car to drive anywhere once we were at the park and started the race. Here's how all of that and the start of the birding sounded. Ben, what are we doing right now? We are what most endurance athletes would call carb loading right now mm -hmm. at the Quickie Mart. So we're stocking up on coffee and pastries, mm -hmm. fueling the birding machine that is the way off coursers. We're ready. What time is it? It's 3.30 a.m. local time. Alvaro, how's, how's the coffee? Uh, how's the croissant? Uh, our, that's our spiritual leader right there. <laughs> All right. I think we've left everything. We did. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Toda. Mark, how are you yeah. feeling, man? Yeah, I'm not feeling too bad. Actually, after this, I feel quite good. Mmm. I'm gonna pick up water. A lot. Water. A water. Here we go. It's about a mile to the site. Okay, it's ten till five. Heard so far. Um, ring plovers calling at the moment. Blackwing stilts. And then we had a night heron earlier, which was a new one for the trip. And we may have had Ortolan flying overhead, which was really great. And where are we right now, Ben? We are at the birding center on the dike on the east end of it, overlooking the wetlands to our left and a nice ditch and reeded area to our right. Jordan to our Jordan right. Jordan to our right. Yeah. We're the crossroads, man. Where all civilization began. You can hear the call to prayer across the Jordanian border, Aqaba. Don't know if you can hear that or not. We just had a long ear down call. Is it? I guess Canis, right? Canis. Go Golden Jackal. Golden Jackal. That's awesome. That guy's a life man. What's this? That was what we heard earlier, wasn't it? I think it's yeah. a frog, isn't it? So it's kind of frog like. It is. It's not your, um, one of the crates. One of the crates. One of the crates that was. Wasn't one of them like big? Spotted. Yeah, it's a loud whipping. It's called whiplash. There's a little whiplash. Yeah. 
Love him. Love him. What's he saying? Then we started birding in earnest, and I was too busy to record many sound files. We got some amazing birds and even some lifers for us North Americans, including Kretsch Mars Bunting, Rupel's Warbler, Little Crake, and Whiskered Turn. We also got to share these birds we'd found with all the teams passing through, which is encouraged in the champions of the flyway bird race. Late in the afternoon, when the birding slowed down, we took a short break for some coffee and beer, and Jonathan stopped by to talk to us more about the event and what it means. No, but what I can tell you is that Israel and Gibraltar are the only places where hunting th is not a statistical factor. Yeah, yeah. And, and Gibraltar, you know, is not yeah. exactly a... No, a Spanish colony. A country. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Whereas everywhere around us, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's slaughter. Fat. It's, it's slaughter. And yeah, and yeah. It's, not, it's not to do good elsewhere. It's to do good for the along the flyway. flyway. Absolutely. Because birds that are safe yeah. here yeah. fly 200 kilometers north and yeah. face the gauntlet. You yeah. know, like yeah. literally, they pass yeah. the border into Lebanon, they're yeah. shot at. Mm -hmm. They pass the border, they fly over the Med, land in Malta, mm -hmm. Cyprus, Greece, mm -hmm. they're slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really a matter of uh, protecting the flyway. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what makes this project so cool, that it's, you know, it's a global network. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that... Ed, the fact that we choose a different recipient every year also shines a spotlight mm -hmm. on the individual problem of every mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Cyprus with the dish, mm -hmm. uh, Greece with the trapping of cage birds. Mm -hmm. And when people understand this, they know there's illegal hunting. Mm -hmm. They're not. They know that there's you know birds and this mm -hmm. and that. They don't often make the connection. Yeah. But when you see specifically and get intimate with a cause, then people suddenly understand. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And turtle doves, you know, coming from the UK. Yeah, you know, yeah, It yeah. used to be yeah. common, and now, uh, yeah. you know, so we stage this in Israel because we believe that Israel is the best showcase for the flyway. Okay. You know, yeah. Israel, and as you can see for yourself, you know, you stand here and there's constant dynamic <laughs> migration moving, mm -hmm. you know, be it hirundines or mm -hmm. songbirds or mm -hmm. soaring birds. And really, you're standing here, you clearly see the rift valley, yeah. you clearly see the heading. It's what, what a perfect... About, what about the people who are in Elat, who, who this pa where this parallel world is happening of human development and c total indifference to the natural environment? Is there any way of engaging those sorts of people Definitely. in I mean, something? This park, what it does, it, that's why it's supported by the municipality of okay. Eilat. Okay. They work with uh, 25 schools within Eilat. There's mm -hmm. a constant movement of, uh, of school kids coming here. Mm -hmm. um, people in Eilat, most of them know about what's going on in Eilat. They okay. know about the park. They know that it's a massive migration flyway, mm -hmm. you know, more so than in other places. It's not that oblivious. Uh, okay. And uh, this mm -hmm. has to do a lot with the work that is done, you mm -hmm. know, specifically here at the park. Right at dark, we got a couple of special birds, blue-cheeked bee-eater and turtle dove, which is one of the species most hard hit by the illegal killing. We celebrated with a beery toast, and a fun discussion ensued about pigeons and intelligence and so on. Mm. All right. Cheers to the coursers. What was our total so far? It was 105, if I... If I remember right here, let me see. Oh, sorry. Oh, he's going to get his phone out. 107. Wow, yeah, cheers. 107. Mm. 107. You guys, everybody yeah. contributed. Yeah. Yeah. You, con cheers, man. Thank cheers. you guys for doing this. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. inviting us. Thanks for inviting us, yeah. Thank this could be legendary. for the music. Mm -hmm. the <laughs> um, The genesis of the, the green category. Huh? Well, let's hope it is, because that's the way they need to go. The thing so is, it, it is about numbers. Yeah. Boys yeah. and toys, it's crazy. But I mean, we've had a great birding mm -hmm. day, even though we've not competed at the highest level in terms of numbers. Who's hey, look, this? Uh, uh, hedgehog. Hedgehog. No way. Yeah, yeah, there it is. That's it. Ethiopian hedgehog. Oh, I got my light here. God, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Oh my god! That's a lifer. It's a hyena. Don't you think it looks like a, a hyena? It looks like a hyena, this. Okay. That's the best thing I've seen on this whole trip. It's the only lifer I've had in fact. No, you poor... That's why everything's now just all messed up in our conversation. <laughs> so, Can't give a sucker an even break. <laughs> so, right, pigeon. 
So in migra- you know, migratory studies, pigeons have you know, been used for a long time because uh, you know, they, they're very good at homing and so on. So they found that in the eyes of pigeons, there's this long chemical that with, um, will flip kind of, uh, an electron in a way from one end to the other in a way that it lines up to um, the uh, gravitational, gravitational sort of, you know, um, line. So it, it actually doesn't know whether it's north or south. What it knows is whether it's poleward or equatorward. And it partially is about the angle, too, of, of the uh, gravitational uh, field that it's Is it a magnetic field? Yeah, yeah. I mean, sort of magnetic, yeah. sort of magnetic yeah. field. So yeah. whether it's horizontal, right. mm-hmm. which would be at the... At the uh, equator, right. or you know, curved down, or curved, curved yeah. down further. Mm-hmm. So they can detect this with their eyes. So these mm-hmm. are chemicals in their eyes, which is what I imagine. You know, you, that's what kind of, uh, to me, is kind of magic. Is what does the pigeon actually see? Right. You know, like so it mm-hmm. sees stuff. Mm-hmm. But does it also have almost like those fighter pilots right. with the little, little you know little information? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that sort of says north, south, yeah. or what have you, and. And so, in the, and the chemicals are in the eyes, mm-hmm. and it, it's, you know, it's mm, incredible, neat. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So they've done experiments, and they, because obviously they've got that, mm-hmm. and they actually do have visual acuity as well to help them sure. yeah. get to yeah. the final bits. And they've done yeah. experiments that look at changing the, stricking the pigeon yeah. into different times of the day, and seeing whether that affects yeah. the and homing instincts. Well, one of the interesting things is they did studies of. Um, uh, pigeon's ability to make logical decisions that were measured against humans, including m- m- maths tutors. Yeah, and, and, and the people pigeon from Norfolk too. <laughs> well, <laughs> people from Norfolk much cleverer than the pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> we eat them, boy. <laughs> Shut up, Barney. Uh, <laughs> that was Barney from Norfolk on your tape, though. Uh, <laughs> And what would Barney say about all this habitat out here? Well, he'd want to plough it and put some barley in. <laughs> that would be a nice field of wheat, and I'd have a great load of tomatoes, and I'd cover it in chemicals, <laughs> is what we'd do. Um, no, what they did, they did these studies with this bloody pigeon, and it, and it, out, it out-competed humans very right. often. And they're very able... Oh, the shit's not flying right. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's good. It's not a barn out, is it? Is it an egret? It's too fast flapping. Yeah, yeah. Um, And they did studies, and these things can make logical choices about... I can't remember what it was, but... Right. But they are able to do better than humans. Of course, we think of pigeons as fairly stupid birds. Right. You know, I, I when in uh, ecology class once we had we made a grid in the city, you know, sort of sidewalks in a in a park, and we put out bread, mm-hmm. and we would see what a pigeon would do in, in terms of eating, eating the bread, and you know, marked all this, charted all this out, and it was very, you know, it would go find a piece of bread and then start just going through and eating all the pieces of bread, right? Then, as soon as you put in a peanut. Right mm-hmm. in in one of the blocks, you know mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. it it sort of found the peanut, and then you know Didn't looked around and um, ate the pieces of bread. You put in two peanuts, and then it suddenly said, "Oh, there's more than one peanut," so it went and it stopped eating bread. Yeah. It would just stop e- eating it because it was better food. And yeah, it's yeah. like, why it's waste your, your time? Yeah, yeah. If there's better food around, it figured it was going to be. And now you're thinking, yeah, exactly. I thought, like, this is a stupid pigeon. Now I've been a birder for years, mm, right? Mm. And uh, I, I was amazed that something so simple yet right. complex. Mm. And it's simple experiment with a mm. complex kind of decision making. Decision making was the in can... the pigeon. You yeah, know? yeah. It's yeah. A, Animals are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice how we went to that wonderful falafel place two days ago? Yes. And we knew there was more falafel, but we've never been back. <laughs> so therefore, yeah. we're less logical than the pigs. <laughs> right. Yeah, less logical. And I we had every falafel. intention of going back. We had it, but we didn't, we did we? Did I, I, you know, I didn't want to bring this up, though, but you <laughs> promised us falafel today. I know. I falafel. Talking about that I falafel, falafel about two that. Days, actually. Yeah, I falafel about not oh, coming God, through on that. Fantastic falafel. Yeah, we had a really good. You you did a little 
Waffle House on us. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Waffle House. Waffle House. Stop by well, what I did do, and, and you'll see when we go back out to the car in the parking lot, is I drew some squares. I put some bread and some peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon, it's amazing. As soon as Alvaro found the beer, <laughs> yeah, he, he, stopped, he stopped looking for the bread. He looking for the bread. Stop the bread. Stop eating the bread. And the peanuts. <laughs> in fact, we put money down, and he would stop picking up the money as soon as he found the beer. Hello? Hello? Oh, my. Hello. Hello. We're, we're being rowdy. Yeah. <laughs> then the race was over, and it was time to hand in our list at the finish line. Here's what that sounded like. Yeah, again, never mind. It's this of the complex palaces, flyover, or when yeah, down there. flyover. Flyover. Medbell is a score for the IBRC. Medbell is a good word for them. These guys like yeah, turtle dove. One our group, fa- our group found it. So. We had turtle dove. We had, we had two turtle doves. Three. 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 Isn't it cool to see turtle dove on race day in this race? Yeah. yeah. I we was had, determined. They finally got me one at dusk. We had the one in the tree. We had a flyover with two, with two, and then that third one. And we got some other people in that third turtle dove. Excellent. Excellent. And you guys never got onto that night jar thingy. We never saw anything. That we saw was... stuff zipping over, but we never got eyeballs on it. You know, I you know that the, in the bird watch bird guides, I mean, they're, they're. I mean, I'm happy with it being a night jar. I mean, they saw the wing pattern. I mean, they saw everything. They saw it well. It's not a bat. But we were there the whole time. Never got a whiff. Never got a whiff. But this is always cool. All three bee eaters. Yep. Last one at dusk. Yeah, a group of them. A huge, huge flock coming out of Jordan. Straight out of Jordan. <laughs> yeah, this guy. You missed one. What? You didn't have Balkan Warmer? You had Balkan Warmer with me. Remember when you were looking at bird, that bird that I told you it's a Willow Warbler? Yeah. And then we were, there, were, there was a Balkan Warbler there, and I told you, oh, it's not this one, there's two. It can't uh, be. Shit. There were Balkan Warblers all over the bloody park. There's no way that you do. It's just we don't know. We don't know what a Balkan Warbler is. It's Never. Eastern Bonelli's. Oh. Eastern Bonelli's. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got that. It's not marked. Oh, but I just didn't see Bonelli's. Because there is no such thing as Bonelli's anymore. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. okay. Bonelli's Warbler. Yeah, well, we, we saw Bonelli's Warbler. 109. 109. done. Um, so Balkan is what what is Eastern Bonelli's. Okay. It's now called Balkan Warbler, and they were all over the parks. So. Yeah, we saw those. No, I'm like, no way, you guys don't. Yeah, we saw those suckers. There you go. So there's another one for you. You see, instead of taking species, I'm giving you. Yeah, the spot. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Yeah, you had an awesome day, really. It was killer. Yeah. Oh, from one place, it's really awesome. Good birds. Black-eared weed ear on the park is a good. Was it on the dikes or something? It, it was, was on the, the back, back side mm-hmm. by the stone curl. Oh, place. in the open area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good bird for the, the park. Female. All right. No, no joy with the dead sea sparrows, huh? No. We well, we had them. three little guys fly by with the other sparrows, and we just didn't count it because it's like. It'd be a lifer for me, and uh, you don't take such a life. Like, yeah. You do not take such. But a it life. was like two thirds the size, and there were sparrows. And where were the silverbills? Right there, just hopping around. Yeah, there. they're cool birds. The following day was the closing and awards ceremony for Champions of the Flyway. Nobody really knew who had won the three major categories: Champions of the Flyway for the most species seen, Knights of the Flyway for the team that shared the most or did the most to promote the event and Guardians of the Flyway for the team that raised the most money for conservation. Both before and after the closing ceremonies, I took the opportunity to interview a few of my fellow champions participants about their experience. Here are those interviews and then the closing ceremonies. I'm Mark Avery and I'm in the Birdwatch Bird Guides Roadrunners team. Now Mark, you're quite a conservation oriented person. I've been following some of your causes over the years. Um, what made you decide to be part of Champions of the Flyway this year? 
I was asked, <laughs> and uh, it looks such an exciting opportunity. Never been to Israel before, always wanted to. Read books telling you how great Elat is in migration time, and it's completely lived up to uh, what I'd read and what I was hoping for. It's just been a fantastic trip. And how did you guys do yesterday on the race? Terrible. <laughs> In but, a we, word. But, but we had a good time. We had a good time. We had a plan. We stuck to the plan. It's just everywhere we went, we seemed to see a few fewer birds than we thought we would. But hey, you know, it was great. We saw some good birds. We saw some lifers yesterday, good. and uh, it's all for a good cause. We've raised quite a lot of money. Yeah. Not the top amount, but we've raised quite a lot of money, uh, and we had a really good time. Well, uh, how how does this stand up? compared to some other conservation causes you've been involved in, would you say? I think one of the really nice things is that this is so international and there's just, and it's real birders too, so it's, uh, uh, it's not just, this event is not just conservationists, it's birders for nature conservation. Mm -hmm. And everybody's been so nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great, it's great meeting people from other countries and uh, sharing knowledge and learning stuff. And uh, uh, we in Europe, we're doing a really bad job killing millions of birds every spring and every autumn. We ought to have grown out of this, so the sooner we stop it, the better. Mark, if people want to follow up on some of the other causes that you're involved in, Hen Harrier Day and so forth, where, where could they find out more about you and, and these causes? <laughs> uh, well, I've got, I've got a website, so put, well, put Mark Avery into Google. Uh, but on Twitter, I'm at Mark Avery. Um, if you put Mark Avery into anything, you'll find me, I'm afraid, and then you'll never get away from me. <laughs> Mark, it's been a gr great pleasure seeing you here at, in Israel at the Champions, uh, and uh, best of luck with everything you do. All the good work, keep it up. Thanks a lot. It's been really nice meeting you. You're a good guy, <laughs> and, you, and you've got a guitar, and you can sing too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. My name is Mark Guit. I'm from the Netherlands and uh, I'm from the Dutch Knights. The Dutch Knights. And I'm Martijn Verdoes, also from the Dutch Knights. And our fellow Knights, uh, Leo uh, Heemskerk and Ferry Ossendorp, they uh, had to catch a plane so they, they couldn't join us here. Yeah? But uh, that's us, the Dutch Knights, the so infamous Dutch the Knights. The infamous Dutch Knights <laughs> in, in the orange, uh, the orange uh, outfits, which were striking on race day. So how did you guys do? do, we, we, do we, uh, we especially made the orange because it's the best way to flush the birds. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, yeah, true. it's the color, you know, it's the color that flushes. Did you, did you do well in the race? Did you feel like it? It can always be better, you know. Yeah. You know, in the end, you're struggling for the last few species, and it can they can fall, or you know, it can go either way. Right. And some did, and some don't. So you know, yeah. we had great fun. That's the most important part. What, what, what were the highlights? The, the the best birds you got? Well, the highlights are it's just great. Like you're you're in this amazing uh, scenery of the of the desert, and and these, these amazing wadis that are. You know, some bushes are literally ticking with uh, with birds, ticking with with lesser white throats. Um, and then out of nowhere, uh, like a semi collage flycatcher and a collage flycatcher uh, turn up. Um, Rufus still scrub robin. Uh, you know, one of the one of the most amazing families uh, are the the wheat years, and we we had all of them uh, except for one. Wow, that's um, that's really so that, something. That, those are those are uh, and you know and Rufus Silt, uh, rock thrush, uh, no. amazing raptor migration, and you can keep on going, keep on going. Does it add something to the um, your enjoyment of the event to know that you're helping to shine a light on conservation? Definitely, definitely, definitely. And I think you know the best way to get people uh, enthusiastic and, and, and engaged in uh, conservation is to have people actually enjoy and see the, the birds and see the beauty of it and, uh, and you know, the, the, the great thing of migration, to see the massive movement of these hundreds and thousands of birds, it's just uh, breathtaking. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that no one in the world cannot be touched by seeing, uh, seeing such, uh, such, you know, na natural sp uh, spectacles. Yeah. We want to do everything we can to protect it, right? Yes, of course, you know, we want to help, so uh, why not? Do you think the Dutch Knights will be back in the future? <laughs> we, need, we never leave, we're always in the heart of the Israeli people, especially from customs, so... <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks so much and congratulations to the Dutch Knights. Thanks. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot with Trevor Hardacre, 
And Trevor, tell us uh, where you're from and who you, who you represent. Uh, I'm from South Africa, Cape Town specifically, and we're representing Birding Eco Tours. It's a birding tour company running out of South Africa that does worldwide tours. And your team was the Birding Eco Tours Bandits, right? That's correct, yes. And you had an awesome logo. Did you commission that uh, beautiful lark with the... Uh, yes, we did. One of our close friends who's a top birder and bird artist in South Africa, uh, we got him to produce the logo for us. And um, we chose Temming's Lark because it worked as a bandit. And fortunately, we were lucky to have really good views of the bird and were relieved to actually see the bird on our logo. Yeah, see, and you're lucky like that because we had the coursers as our logo and we did not get a cream-colored courser during the thing because we were at one place that was a courser-free zone, basically. <laughs> now, how did your team do in the race? Uh, we got uh, 163 species, which uh, apparently places us in fourth position, one off the podium. Dang, Nabbit. Uh, you know, uh, the teams that were going around all day yesterday, all of them at some point came through our place at the uh, birding center, and uh, many people were talking that it was a tough slog. Do, do, was that kind of the case for you guys? Yeah, I think everybody battled. Um, there wasn't too much visible migration, and uh, we had a bit of wind as well, which didn't help with the birds trying to pick up calls. But uh, I suppose everybody had to suffer in the same conditions. So. Have you been here before in Israel? Uh, yes, once before. Yeah, so not a lot of experience on your team for the Israeli birds? That's correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> much like us, we brought in Mark Cocker from the UK for the Western Pal Palearctic birds, and he really did help. But uh, it's it's kind of fun, though, traveling, as I'm sure you do, as being a tour uh, company owner and operator. It's really nice to be someplace where the birds are unfamiliar. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, we're fortunate in that some of these birds we do get in South Africa, uh, but many of them are also variations on a, on a theme that we know well. <laughs> Well, Trevor, thank you so much for being here and being part of it, and congratulations to you guys for your big fundraising and also the high total. I'm sorry you weren't on the podium. I, I wish you had been. We gave that up a long time ago. I don't think my big day, days are over. Yeah. Uh, and congratulations to you guys as well. You did a fantastic job. Thanks, man. If, if people want to find out more about Birding Eco Tours, where can they find that? Uh, on the web, uh, birdingecotours.co.za. That's calm. That's easy. Yeah. All right, Trevor, we'll see you down the road. Great stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, my name is Anat Gal. I live in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, I work as a um, tour guide in the Safari Zoo in Tel Aviv. Uh, I work as a tour guide in uh, Ariel Sharon Park. Oh. It's, uh, well, the biggest park. Uh, going to be the biggest park in Israel that has um, kind of urban nature aspects to it. Mm -hmm. um, so your team was, what was the name of your team? The Great Bustards. Okay. And you, uh, what was special about your team? First of all, we all met in this course. Okay. We are all very young at birding. Uh, so, you know, we had our own uh, difficulties to uh, conquer. Uh, we all come from um, the background of, I know we are all educators yeah. or uh, uh, tour guides, tour le leaders, uh, and we come from different places in the country. We are all girls, which is not a very um, um, common uh, thing to see in the birding uh, community. Well, especially in competitions, it seems that they tend to skew more more to the male side of the spectrum. Yeah, I can, yeah, we were not very competitive, you know, we just wanted to take part and uh, this really gave us an opportunity to do something for conservation, to raise awareness mm -hmm. around us. And I can tell you, I got everyone around me mad about this project. Uh, the schools where I teach, the, uh, you know, uh, groups that I guide, uh, they all heard about the project. One class I teach second graders. Their teacher was so excited about the project when I told them I wouldn't right. be uh, present uh, and someone would come uh, to fill my place. She, ta she told all the kids uh, to bring one or two shekels, it's like 15, 50 cents right. uh, from their allowance and they will raise a class donation Aww. and they did. And it, you know, mm -hmm. when they put their money, their allowance, mm -hmm. into something they believe in, because I teach them birding, they right. go out outside of the school, 
they look up, they see birds they had no idea existed around right. their house, right. and they obviously like to uh, yeah. keep doing that, and educating. What, what was your strategy as a team? Did, where, did you do the entire southern, air, you know, north to south area, or did you do places that you were more familiar with? Or? Okay. Um, in terms of the race, you know, as young birders, we are very aware of our uh, limitations. And so we planned our route um, so that the places we uh, go to are places where we know the bird species, it's, uh, we can identify them, and this was pretty much our strategy. And did other teams help you when you came along? Yes, yes. This mm -hmm. is also a great, part, a great uh, aspect yeah. of the race and of this, really, right. experience. You meet people from all around the world. Uh, they all share, you know, the mm. same uh, uh, enthusiasm yeah. about about birding. Yeah, many people helped us. We also tried to help if we could, yeah. and we yeah we had a few special species. We so what were a couple of the birds you saw that were special? Oh uh, well, this is going to be very hard for me because the names in Hebrew are very oh. different okay. than the English names. Uh, we did see. Uh, black-bellied sand grouse, Ooh, nice. a group of black-bellied sand grouse, which was a surprise. Uh, we saw a hen harrier, a uh, step eagle, okay. it was really nice. And how many species did you all end up with? We ended up with 104 species, wow. which is, uh, you know, for us, it's a... Uh, Big day, century yeah. day, they call that, over 100. Yeah, 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 century day, exactly. That's wonderful. Well, your team really did a great job, and it, the enthusiasm that you had certainly came through, I think. It's always nice to have new people join the flock, as it were. And so, uh, on behalf of the rest of the bird watchers, those of us who have been doing it for a long time, welcome. We're glad thank to have you. you with us. Well, Anat, I want to thank you for joining us here on This Birding Life. It's been a real pleasure talking with you and getting to know you just a little bit. I hope we'll have a chance to go birding sometime in the future. And I want to wish you and your fellow great bustards all the best in the, in the thank future. Thank you very much. I would really love that. Welcome to the official 2016 Champions of the Flyway closing and award ceremony. And, well, you know, uh, we'll try to do it smoothly, but it's very emotional for us as well, as you know, so hopefully, you know, we'll be all right. I'd like to invite uh, our main uh, sponsors. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dale Forbes of Swarovski Optic, if you would please come up here and join us for the official award ceremony of Champions of the Flyway 2016. <laughs> the Knights of the Flyway Award, the Knights of the Flyway is basically uh, the team that did the most for the project, promoting the project, pushing it worldwide, uh, and on the ground, helping other teams, scouting, uh, providing other teams with information. But really, um, in this case, we all agree uh, that the team that deserves uh, the Knights of the Flyway are the Birdwatchers Digest Way Off Courses. The Way Off Courses Billy Thompson III. This guy's dedication uh, to this project, again, from the beginning. Uh, uh, Bird Watchers Digest uh, sent a team uh, the first year, supported us uh, the second year, and they're back uh, with all the glory this year. And we're very, very proud. We feel that you did so much for the project. So uh, thank you on behalf of us all. of the Flyway Award, uh, again, uh, sponsored by Swarovski Optic. Uh, the Way Off Coursers are receiving a pair of uh, Swarovski Optic SLCs, 10 by 42s, a wonderful uh, piece of equipment, but they don't get to keep it. <laughs> They're gonna hang on to these binoculars, and in the British Bird Fair in August in Rutland, they're gonna choose a bird life partner of their choice in which they're gonna donate the binoculars to. So, uh, in the spirit of the Knights of the Flyway. Now 
we're coming to um, the, the guardians of the flyway. This is the international team who raises the most money for conservation. We have a new record number. This year, collectively, you've managed to raise, well, the record was 61,000. It's now 67,000. Fantastic job. One team this year has done just an amazing job. They've raised so much money, it's a new all-time team record. The total is $12,259. And guess what? Yet again, I'm proud to announce that Guardians of the Flyway goes to the Birdwatchers Digest, Zeiss Way Off Courses. Congratulations, guys. Thanks everybody. Uh, it, it's a huge honor to be here. Uh, we did the song and then it just kind of steamrolled from there. I, I want to especially thank everybody who got behind the overall project of fundraising. I thought this year's sharing, uh, so, especially on social media, was incredible. And uh, I know there were a lot of teams who raised a lot of money. I especially want to acknowledge the uh, Trevor and the folks from the Beating Up the Tours Band. The Burning Eagle Tours team from South Africa were a close second. You guys did an incredible job fundraising over 10,000 US dollars, so thank you very much. You lost them, and it's just very hard to keep up with these guys. You did very well. I think the only other thing I want to say is it's wonderful to be in a room of so many like-minded people and to feel the love, not just for birds, but for each other too. So we love you, and thank you so much. Thank you to the Way Off Coursers. Uh, this year's race, as you saw, was not easy. All the, bird, all the teams struggled with some pretty straightforward birds. Soaring bird migration, uh, soaring bird migration uh, was fairly weak. Um, and if you didn't hit any like good purple patches in the desert, then a lot of common species, you know, I saw, we saw the checklists. Many people missed things like chucker, Arabian babbler, desert finch, short-toed eagle, birds that are a given, usually. Um, and without further ado, the reason we are all assembled here, or one of the reasons we are all assembled here, <coughs> uh, I'd like to present the international champions of the flyway. As mentioned, uh, this year was a challenging race, and uh, it was a very tight race at the end. Uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce a team that I think we all saw the dedication, the professionalism, the lunacy. <laughs> I'm proud and happy to invite the Zeiss Arctic Red Poles. You deserve it. <laughs> the captain of the flag of 174 species. Wow. Which is also the highest overall score. They beat all the Israeli teams as well. We are nearly done. Only the most important thing remains. But the most important figure, again, in this whole thing, uh, I'd like to invite our uh, colleagues uh, from the Hellenic Ornithological Society, Hoss, if you would come up here for the most important part of the evening. We're very proud to hand this check to the Hellenic Ornithological Society. This is the highest figure we've ever written in a check. And Hoss are working away with $67,000. It comes to you all. And the same goes. The same birds that we saw during the race are going to hit Greece within the next few days. It's crushing to think that, you know, the same birds that you counted on the race, within three days are going to face the traps and the guns. Wow. <laughs> well, I think you couldn't be now. Okay, we said it before in the opening ceremony. Uh, we'd really, really li like to say a big thank you to all of you. 
and <coughs> SPNI to BirdLife International, Jean, Jonathan, Dan, everybody for having this collaboration. Each individual of you, we have done such an amazing effort, not only for fundraising, but for tweeting, sharing news in Facebook, speaking for us, for, for safe flyways in Greece. And thank you very, very much. Very much. I'd like to finish uh, with something very special. Uh, Bill, if you would come up here, please, now. And uh, I'd like to ask all the children in the race to try and come up here to the stage now, please. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> We're going to do the anthem with all the kids and everyone one last time. Okay, and uh, you know, it's a bit crowded. We all know the words, so I give you from one last time live performance from Bill Thompson III, uh, the official anthem of Champions of the Flyway, A River of Birds in the Sky. Thanks, Jonathan. I was remiss before, I wanted to thank everybody back home at Birdwatchers Digest and also our co-corporate co sponsor, Carl's Eye Sports Optics. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for the help of those two organizations. Finally, I want to say one other thing. We did a green big day yesterday at the, uh, at the uh, Elat Birdwatching Center. We walked 10 miles within the center and 109 species. And I want to encourage some teams next year to join us in that uh, cause. Think about that for next year and thanks everybody. <laughs> Ten thousand years and more it's been flowing this river of birds in the sky. Generations of people have watched it in awe, and it still brings a tear to my eye. Flying south in the fall, back north in the spring, and millions just moved to survive. At the end of our day, the way-off coursers tallied a total of 109 species, and a final examination of our list by race founder Jonathan Mayrath revealed that we'd probably missed a Levant's sparrowhawk among the six or seven individual sparrowhawks we'd seen that day. No worries, though. We had a fantastic day of birding, highlighted by the incredible diversity of the bird life at the Bird Watching Center. And we feel we set a precedent for future champions teams to consider doing a green big day. We drove a total of four miles on race day and walked about 10 miles, an average of 7.8 birds per mile. I wonder if anybody can top that for 2017. What was so exciting about staying in one place was the way this glorious, multicolored, international, border-free river of birds came to us. Suddenly there would be a couple of whiskered turns just in, then a rainbow flock of European bee eaters. Another time it was a passing scramble of all three, of three swift species, a flock of black storks soaring high overhead, a momentary Kretschmar's bunting. All of this was super exhilarating and it reminded us precisely why we were there and what is at stake and why Champions of the Flyway as an event really matters. They're getting ready to race again for the Champions of the Flyway 2017. I can't be over there on a team this year, but I'm certainly there in spirit. You can be a part of this fantastic event by supporting one of the teams in this year's race. Just Google Champions of the Flyway, click on the tab to see the 2017 teams. It's super easy to donate, and I hope you'll consider doing so. Thanks to our friends at Champions of the Flyway, Jonathan, Dan, and everyone else, and to my fellow way-off coursers, Ben Lisdis, Alvaro Jaramillo, and Mark Cocker. We were super proud to set the team fundraising record last year of over $12,000 and to be the first ever team to do a Green Big Day. We certainly hope both of those records are surpassed this year. That's it for this episode of This Birding Life. Special thanks to Birdwatcher's Digest, our podcast home for the past decade. And if you don't read Birdwatcher's Digest, you really should. Check it out at birdwatchersdigest.com. Carl Zeiss Sports Optics has been our generous sponsor of This Birding Life and of Champions of the Flyway, too. Learn more about their incredible optics and their community of birders at facebook.com slash Zeiss Birding.
And thanks to our other sponsor, the American Birding Expo, which brings you the world of birding in one place. Join us this fall in Philadelphia, September 29 to October 1, for the third annual American Birding Expo. Just visit birdingexpo.com for more details. Thanks again for listening to this episode. And You may know I usually sign off with, I'll see you out there with the birds. Well, there's now a blog and a podcast with that same name. The podcast is one I co-host with my buddy, Ben Lisdis. Check it out by Googling Out There with the Birds podcast. Tune in for the fun. We publish a new episode about once every two weeks. So until next time, I'll see you out there with the birds. Laters. For 10,000 years and more, it's been flowing this river of birds in the sky. Generations of people have watched it in awe and it still brings a tear to my eye. Flying south in the fall, back north in the spring. are on every side it's a wonder and he make it alive but there are some with traps and guns who wait along the way birds are passing the guns are blasting it's such a cry and shame drawn by the season by day, others by night, but all run this gauntlet of death. Birds flying free, no, no borders you see, no one can claim them alone. This great migration over dozens of nations, let's help them safely get home. Champion, and we're all counting.